In this video, I'll be talking about how to simplify your mixing process by using buses to fix the different problems that you may encounter inside of your mix downs. So first we'll talk briefly about the advantages of using buses, which are also sometimes called group tracks depending on your digital audio workstation. And then we'll be showing a few examples of how you can practically use these buses to help problems inside your mix using this mix as a demo. So if you'd like to download these stems and follow along, you can do that with the course resources linked with the videos. So this will definitely be a little bit more of a basic mixing video. If you're already very experienced with mixing, you may already know some of these techniques. This video is more aimed at mixers who are starting out and looking to advance their skills. And with these videos, I want to cover a variety of different techniques. So some of them are more advanced and some of them are a bit more simple yet equally important like this video. So using buses not only speeds up your workflow, but it enables you to address global problems in your mix rather quickly, which could be helpful whenever you're working with things like guitars, for example. If you needed all of the guitars to cut through the mix a bit better, you could apply one EQ to everything to make everything cut through your mix just a little bit better. However, before jumping into buses, it's worth noting that it's still important to mix the individual tracks, especially with things like low pass and high pass filters, and even compressors as well. But using buses rather extensively in your mix downs has several advantages that make them helpful whenever you're mixing your tracks. So the buses should be used in conjunction with individual track mixing. So early on in your mix down, I would recommend setting everything up with group tracks or buses, depending on how they're set up in your digital audio workstation, because it'll help keep things organized, and it also helps a lot with audio leveling as well. So inside of this mix, I have all my drums sent to a single bus. So you can see we have these nice group tracks inside of Ableton, which hop over to our mixer. Everything is bussed down to this one drums group here, which enables me to adjust the level rather quickly of all the drums. We have the percussion also bussed into its own group. We have these electric guitars, because they're all very similar. We have them all bust to their own group as well. So it just helps keep things very organized, and then you can individually process and adjust the levels of each of these different buses. So now let's go ahead and move into some specific mixing tricks for buses. So let's first start off with equalization. I like to call this kind of global equalization. Basically, I can take one EQ and apply it to all of my electric guitars, for example, to address a global issue that all of them are having. This helps me move rather quickly in my mix process, and I don't get too carried away with individual details, and I can make broader strokes across my whole mix to get everything nice and balanced. So let's go ahead and listen to these guitars real quick. So these electric guitars sound nice, but they definitely lack a little bit of clarity. Especially in the low end, there's a bit of conflicting frequencies that are happening inside of all my electric guitars that we don't necessarily need. There's also a little bit of resonance as well that I don't like that's kind of in the upper frequencies. And it's happening on all of the guitar tracks. Let's go ahead and jump over to an equalizer and make a few different mix changes. I have loaded up the Pro Q2 from FabFilter. You could use any EQ here, it's just one I like to use quite a bit. Let's make a low cut and that'll be at about 24 decibels. And I'm gonna cut out all these low frequencies. If you take a look, you can see that we have all this bass that we definitely don't need, all this stuff down here. We can cut everything below about 260. That's all this stuff. Because we have this acoustic guitar, we have this bass, we have a piano and these kick drums and snares and everything that have a lot of body to them. And these electric guitars are kind of just more of a little bit of a melodic accent for the whole track. They don't need to have a lot of body to them. It's actually conflicting a lot with the acoustic guitars. So even though it's just a tiny bit of bass frequencies, it's clashing with our acoustic guitar, which makes those electric guitars a little less clear in the mix. And then let's also make one more adjustment here. And that's going to be to pull out one of these resonances that I'm hearing. I'm going to go ahead and swap this over to 24 decibel filter. And the resonance is about right there or so. You can hear that kind of gross resonant frequency. So I can go ahead and just pull that out, and that's happening on both of my electric guitars. So I'm not really a fan of that resonance, so I can go ahead and just remove it. And I could use this EQ on both guitars to do it rather quickly. So listening before and after, everything sounds like this.
So this isn't a very giant change. It's not completely changing the sound of those electric guitars in our mix. It's just helping make everything a bit clearer sounding by removing that nasty resonance and also pulling out some of those bass frequencies that are conflicting with the other elements of the track. So this just adds a bit of clarity to our mix down, and we did it rather quickly and easily by just using one equalizer for all of our electric guitars. If you need to make very drastic changes, I recommend doing it on the individual level inside of your group channel. So moving on to each of these different guitar tracks and EQing or compressing them individually, and then using the buses as more of a broad stroke, that's just helping add a bit of clarity to the overall mix down. So if you need to do anything too serious on the EQ curves, I'd recommend doing it on those individual channels because you'll get a bit better results. So now we can jump on over to another common bus effect, which is compression. This could be used either to compress rather heavily, or just to add a bit of glue to your mix down, which is what I'll be doing in this example. So let's do this to the electric guitars, because we've already been working with them. Let's go ahead and grab the glue compressor, and we'll put that before our reverb unit. So it'll be after the kind of vintage effects here that we did in one of the previous videos. We have this nice compressor, and then we have our glue compressor. So all we're using this for is just to add a bit of cohesion to the bus, which is referred to in mixing terms as glue. Basically just level everything slightly and just kind of tighten it up. So let's first go a bit overboard with our compression settings and then we'll dial it back. So let's drop that threshold all the way down. Let's solo the electric guitars. So it's definitely way too much compression. Let's set our attack here though. Make sure we let through all those nice transients. Now let's drop that release down so everything jumps up in volume rather quickly after it's been compressed. Then let's adjust our threshold to something a bit more reasonable. It'd be about 2 to 3 decibels of reduction. So it's not a super drastic compression effect. But what it's doing here is just leveling that audio and just tightening everything up a bit and tightening up some of those plucky attack transients that we have on those arpeggios on our electric guitars, which will make everything sound a bit more balanced in our mix. So this will be before. And this is after. So it kind of just tames those attack transients of the electric guitar and just tightens everything up slightly. And that's usually how I like to use compression on my buses with the instruments like guitars. For things like drums, I usually will go a bit heavier on the compression. But for instrument tracks that are bussed together, using a compressor for just a little bit of glue can give you really excellent results on your mix down just to help tame some of those attack transients. Then the final bus technique that I want to show you is parallel compression. This can be done on any element inside your mix down, but it works quite well on drums, which is what it's commonly used on. So let's hop on over to our drum channel and I'll show you how to set this up. If you're not already using this technique or familiar with it, this is a really great thing to use on your buses, especially your drums to add punch and body to the drums. And it's very easy to set up. All you have to do is create a return track. Or some digital audio workstations like Reason have a parallel channel. You just right click on it and select parallel channel. But in the case of Ableton, you'll use the return tracks to set this up. And then you want to go ahead and send the drums over to this channel. So now we have our main drum track and then a copy of our drums over here. And they're running in parallel to one another. And then on the return track, we could just name this comp or something like that so we know what it is. And then on that return track, you want to add in a compressor. And then we're going to go a bit wild with this compressor. So we'll drop the threshold all the way down. Go ahead. Increase that attack up to maybe about there. So we just get this very, very punchy attack transient on the compressor. And normally this would be way too much compression. And then all we're going to do is blend that in with our initial drum signal. So you can hear that's a lot of it. Let's just do maybe a little bit. So you can hear we're adding just a little bit of body to our drums, and we're also increasing the track transient. Those elements that are happening in between the kicks and snares are being brought up in volume just a little bit, 
And then we also have these nice and punchy attack transients on the kicks. And in this case, I'm using this in a bit more subtle way, just to add a bit more liveliness to the drums, which is usually how I like to use parallel compression. So in context of the entire mix down, it sounds like this. And this is without. So this is just adding a little bit of punch to those drums, helping them cut through the mix, and also helps make everything sound a bit more punchy and polished as well. So if you're not already using parallel compression, especially on your drums, I definitely recommend using it. It's an excellent technique for buses, and you could also do it for individual instruments as well. But in the case of this video, we're showing how to use it with buses, which is where I usually like to use parallel compression. So by using busing inside of your mixes, it makes everything quicker. You can easily address global problems with instruments, like we did with these electric guitars. You can add glue to the different elements to kind of tighten things up. And you can easily add just a bit of parallel compression as well to help everything sound a bit punchier. So it's a very quick and fast way of working. That's why I like to spend a lot of the initial time in mixing inside of buses to kind of get a general mix and level of where I want the whole track to be. And then from there, I'll go and individually tweak each of the different elements.